Hello, everybody. This is Gerald Salenti, and it's Wednesday, July 3rd, 2024. The day before what they used to call Independence Day, the 4th of July. And we have with us a man who, um, again, as I say over and over, week after week, month after month, year after year, there's nobody that I know of, and if you could show me anybody that you know of, that knows about the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, what it means, what it represents, and how we've lost what it meant and what it represented, than Judge Andrew Napolitano. Judge, thank you for being here today. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. You know, it, the actual name of tomorrow is Independence Day. We are, of course, uh, independent of uh, Great Britain. They are not independent of us. They're a vassal state of the United States, and we're not independent of the government. Turns out that <clears throat> taxation with representation is worse than taxation without representation. The tax rate at the time the Declaration of Independence was written, the maximum was 3% on products and not on income. Now, of course, if you live in New York City, you pay 59% of your income to some tax collector. You know, here's the cover of this week's Trends magazine, just to solidify what you just said. Mm, right. Independence Day, pay your taxes, do what you're told. Right. Right? Right. right. Well, that's where, uh, that's where we are uh, today. Yeah. You know, that so-called debate the other night. <laughs> Um, none of neither of them mentioned fidelity to the Constitution. They're both uh, in favor of mass surveillance. They're both in favor of more wars. They're both in favor of borrowing trillions a year to fund a federal government, 98 percent of which is not authorized uh, by the Constitution. Aside from their personalities and their energy level, they are Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Doesn't matter which one of them wins. We'll still be fighting wars. We'll still be spied on uh, and we'll still be borrowing trillions a year. Yeah, that's the way we looked at it. This is two days before the debate. Presidential reality show, the great debate, Daffy Duck versus Goofy. You got Tweedledee and Tweedledum, same thing. Yeah. It's yeah. disgusting what's happened. Yeah. Disgusting. You know, um, you have a very important article about uh, Twilight's Last Gleaming, and it's about the Constitution. and and But um, there's something much more important because this is the breaking news and the headlines on CNN and on Yahoo. Look at the one down the bottom. The son of Asia's richest man is getting married in one of India's most lavish weddings of the year. That's CNN. What the hell do I care? What the hell do I care that some jerk is getting married? Well, his daddy's rich, and this is news. <laughs> it's really absurd. They they must uh, they must be pandering to somebody to some group in their audience, and they must feel that that will draw ratings because it's not newsworthy at all again yahoo same thing top story top story the son of asia's richest man is getting married it's right there this is just before we went on the air this is the top story what's wow. going on in the world doesn't count how they're robbing us of our freedom doesn't count so your article here is so important i want to read the beginning of it and again, you mentioned about the presidential debate, and you nailed it right in the beginning. When a president, when a presidential debate debate devolves into an argument over golf scores, and afterward the public argues about the candidate's mental acuity or personal honesty, when the questions for voters is who is the sharper debater, rather than who would be more faithful to the Constitution. When both major party candidates, as you just said, support mass surveillance, undeclared foreign wars, and borrowing trillions of dollars a year to fund a bloated government, 
nearly all of which is nowhere countenanced by the Constitution. We can safely conclude that personal liberty in our once free society has been radically diminished and it is in the twilight of its existence. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, freedom. Well, that's where we are today because of the uniparty. Now, I know that in, and you and I don't usually talk personalities. Trump and Biden are two radically uh, different people, but the people around them of the same attitude about the issues that are of importance today, privacy, war, and debt. The yep. same, same attitude and the same with the Congress. I mean, you have Thomas Massey and his uh, libertarian, small band of libertarians. And for a while, you have Bernie Sanders and AOC and their small band of uh, progressives. But 90% of the Congress is in lockstep on all these uh, issues. Does the Congress represent us? No, they represent the special interests that get them there and the special interests that keep them there, whether it's big pharma or the military industrial uh, complex or APAC or whatever it might be. Those are the people whose views are represented in Congress, not you, not me, not the hundreds of thousands that are watching us now yearning for personal liberty, liberty from the government. You said it. The Congress represents the special interests. Right. Look at the campaigns. If you don't get money, you can't run. Well, look at this campaign not far from you. Now, I, I don't agree with Congressman Bowman on, on just about anything. I agree with him on, the, on, on Ukraine, and I agree with him on uh, Israel. But because he opposed aid to Israel, APAC dropped $22 million in a Democratic primary for Congress yep. in a very tight, small, because it's New York City, congressional uh, district. And they beat him. But that's the money that they are willing to spend to silence a voice. They win overwhelmingly in the House of Representatives, but they have to silence all voices that would dare uh, oppose them. That's an example of a special interest. There's no way Congressman Bowman could possibly have raised uh, enough money to compete adequately with the $22 million that APAC and their colleagues gave to the fellow that uh, defeated uh, Bowman. We have an article in this week's Trends Journal. Adelson's wife, Israel Uberhawk, to become one of Trump's top donors. $100 million. Gee, I wonder what Trump promised in return. She said that she was going to ask him for a commitment uh, that the West Bank would become part of Israel under his presidency. So he probably told her that if she gave him the $100 million. And his uh, husband, who passed away, gave him a hundred million before. Correct. And and the deal was they're going to move the embassy, which they did from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And you know that land that Israel stole from uh, Syria, the Golan Heights, it's yours. Right. Yeah. Right. That's this is the government. Again, right. going going back to your article, you go on to say. The Declaration of Independence, which is dated July 4th, 1776, but was signed and released days afterwards, is both an indictment of King George III and his government, as well as a manifestation of limited government and maximum individual freedom. Though the final version drops some of Jefferson's most bellicose language, the document as we know it is largely his, not only his lofty language, but also the three principles Jefferson values that it manifests. Could you tell us those three principles, Judge? The first is the consent of the, uh, of the governed. No government is licit without the consent of those it governs. Otherwise, it's, uh, it's, it's not morally uh, valid. Jefferson made uh, that argument. Do you know anybody that has consented to the federal government? No. Maybe some of the uh, framers did at the time the Constitution was formed when, when the government was uh, small. Uh, the second uh, of those values uh, is natural rights, that our rights uh, come from our humanity. The government believes it is the origin of our rights. 
But when Jefferson said, we are endowed by our creator with certain inalienable rights, and among these is life, liberty, uh, and the pursuit of happiness, uh, he was wedding the country at its birth to the concept of natural rights, uh, that our rights uh, come from our humanity. And the third is when the government fails to protect natural rights, it is the duty of the people to alter or abolish it. That was July 4th, 1776. July 4th, 2024, we have a monster government that borrows between two and four uh, trillion a year to stay in existence, that is waging two uh, undeclared wars, that thinks it can right any wrong and tax any event and, and fight any foe and borrow any amount of money, the Constitution be damned. So we are so far afield from the values that Jefferson and the Congress articulated uh, when the country was founded that it's no longer uh, recognizable. How do we get rid of a government that takes 60% of our wealth? How do we get rid of a government that commits genocide? How do we get rid of a government that just keeps enriching its benefactors? Well, you know, we're trying to do what we can and the people that you have on as guests and everybody really, you know, <laughs> I'm heartbroken. <laughs> the guests, the people you have on judging freedom, uh, you know, we're all trying to do this and we just don't talk about it. And of course, we're having a peace and freedom rally up here in Kingston, New York. And Judge Napolitano is going to be one of the speakers, along with Scott Ritter, Max Blumenthal, and uh, Anya Parmphil. And um, it, it, we're doing what we can, but we can't do it without you. We have to, the people have to unite. We, we, need, we need a peaceful revolution. Without it, we're finished. You know, you go on here, again, we're talking about what Jefferson said. Moreover, Jefferson wrote, again, saying, following up, that whenever the government, even one consented to by the governed, is destructive of natural rights, it is the right and the duty of the governed to alter or abolish it. And it's it's our time to do that. They just passed that to the Supreme Court. What a name given to the Supreme Court. Supreme jerks. What's your take on that, Judge, what just happened with the Supreme Court? Well, the immunity case, that decision could have been written by uh, Franklin uh, Delano Roosevelt. It's political uh, gibberish. It, it creates uh, the president as, as a prince. It presumes, presumes that everything the president does is lawful. This takes us back to what Nixon said. And when Nixon said it, we all mocked it. Because the president does it, that means it's not illegal. That is basically what John Roberts and a majority of the court uh, ruled the other day. Should Harry Truman have been prosecuted for mass murder of 250,000 Japanese a week before the Japanese government was ready to uh, surrender and incinerated them? Of course. Should Donald Trump be prosecuted for murdering General Soleimani when he was on his way to lunch? Of course. Should George W. Bush and Dick Cheney be prosecuted for lying us into uh, wars? Wars under false pretense on the 500,000 people they murdered. Of course, should Bill Clinton, Clinton be prosecuted for the people that he killed in order to get our attention off of his own uh, uh, prosecution for lying under oath about a sexual encounter? Of course. Why don't the laws apply to everyone? Oh, John Roberts says the president shouldn't act with caution. He shouldn't worry that he might be doing the right thing. Of course he should act with caution. And of course he should worry he might not be doing the right thing. That will restrain him from doing the wrong thing. But that's not the government we're going to have. These six justices, two of whom are friends of mine, uh, are, are creating a kingdom. A so both kingdom. Before Biden orders SEAL Team 6 to kill Donald Trump because he believes that Trump is about to destroy democracy as we know it. Well, under this uh, opinion, that is presumed to be an official act and presumed to be immune from prosecution. What are you, crazy? That's what we have today. Crazy. It's crazy. 
And you said, like, what are you, crazy? Yeah, it's crazy. It, what's going on in front of our eyes, the demise of America, it's, it's just heartbreaking. I'm so sad. Uh, and, and, and so many people are so, again, look at this stupid debate that they had. I mean, it was, it was, it, 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 it was so ignorant. Uh, none of them talked about limiting government. Um, none of them talked about stopping the spying. Neither of them talked about stopping the wars. Neither of them said, I'm not going to borrow a couple trillion a year. <clears throat> Trump was only in for four years. He raised the uh, national debt by seven trillion. George W. raised it by seven trillion in eight years, and he fought two wars. So it gets worse and worse and worse. When George W., uh, a goofball daddy's boy uh, that he is, uh, became president, the federal government's debt was two trillion. <laughs> it is now it is now thirty five trillion. The global debt is almost a hundred trillion. Wow, it's ninety one trillion. Wow. And again, and you look at a 91 trillion and a third, what is, is America's debt. Right. So we are very close to a trillion a year uh, in debt service, right, right off the top, uh, paying interest on the debt. We never, we never retire the debt. We roll it over, but we never retire it. I don't even know if the American public uh, understands uh, the significance of all that debt. But I do know, again, aside from their personalities and energy level, they are Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Yep. Well, as we uh, say, just, just like both parties uh, in Congress. As we say, Daffy Duck or Goofy. Right. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's, that's all, folks. I mean, it's a, right. it's a comedy show. Right. And a very sad one. Judge, there's a lot of pressure out now to get Biden off the ticket. What's your take? Um, you know, if you had asked me a few days ago, I would have said, no, this will die down. But it seems not only that it has not died down, uh, it has gotten more aggressive. Just as we were coming on the air, I was reading that, um, you know, there's two or three organizations of Republican never Trumpers, as they call themselves. They were all prepared to make major public endorsements of Biden until the debate. Now they're not going to do it. They may vote for him privately. I think the Democrats are going to be forced to put somebody else uh, in there. Um, it doesn't matter to you and me because it would be a person that would be just as bad uh, as Trump, just as from a liberty point of view, just as bad as Biden from a liberty point of view, but it'll be another human being. I don't know who. Uh, their polls show them that only one Democrat comfortably beats Trump and she doesn't want to run. That's Mrs. Obama. I would say it's going to be Gavin Newsom would be my guess. He's a very uh, uh, physically attractive candidate, but if you look at his record in oh. California, the only place in America, worse than Washington, D.C., is California. Yep. And he's the first piece of scum that launched the COVID war. Yes. Yes. And he's an arrogant, another daddy's boy. He got all his money from the Getty gang when he started his business because his daddy was a, a, a lawyer for the Getty gang. And uh, again, it's, it was related to Pelosi through marriage and something. And uh, arrogant as can be, I would, my forecast will be if he gets the nomination, the Democratic to run for president, he'll win. Mm. And the reason he'll win is because if Biden runs against Trump, a lot of people aren't going to go out and vote for Biden. But if Newsom runs, all the Trump haters will run out and vote for Newsom, gruesome Newsom. Yeah. That's my take. So he would win. And it will be more hell on earth in America as we continue to decline in so many different ways. And you really sum, by, sum it up over here. The former American public is now an empire. 
with its annual military budget larger than those of the next nine countries combined, and with troops on more than 1,000 military installations around the globe, <coughs> as George III once boasted of his empire, the sun never sets on our empire. Empire, that would be the form of government against which Jefferson and his colleagues violently and successfully rebelled. Unchecked, you go on to say, we lost our personal liberty and a government that rejects its founding values, recognizes no limits to its powers and assaults the liberties of those it governs. It should be altered or abolished before liberty's last gleaming turns to a long, cold darkness. Very powerful, Judge. Thank you, Gerald. Very powerful. This is a, this. If, you know, all the articles. You well, they're also you know so informative and powerful. But this one says you know uh, again the sun never sets on the U.S. military industrial complex. Basically, right. And and uh, we we have to unite to stop this. It's up to the people. And Scott Ritter wants to have a million person march when we have that rally in September. So we close down the throughway and we really get publicity to stop this madness. I guess I'll have to come up there the night before if we're going to close down the throughway. <laughs> yep. Then we have to we have to make this happen. It's up to the people. Yeah. Uh, what else what other suggestion do you have? Well, the United States the federal government will collapse of its own weight, but not until a lot more damage is done. And I don't know if that collapse will happen in your lifetime uh, or mine. Well, you will. So, the collapse is going to be, it's World War III. It, look what's going on with Israel, ramping it up. There was an article that came out from the New York Times that said that um, uh, they were going to wind down the war in Gaza. And Netanyahu came right out and said, we ran the video, that uh, that's a lot of baloney. We're going to keep it going. And now Iran says, if you attack Lebanon, we're going we're gonna to wipe you out. They're going to attack Lebanon. Netanyahu is going to do anything he can to stay in power. He's an evil, demonic, by his deeds, person. Uh, and I, I believe that if we don't stop this, World War III is going to escalate. There's going to be a false flag event. I will bet my life on it. Yeah. Whether it happens in the, with, with Ukraine going on, with the United States supplying it more weapons to, 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 to hit deeper and deeper into Russia, there's something is going to happen that's going to unite the people in the United States, just like they did with little Georgie Bush. We're going to get that guy Osama bin Laden, dead or alive. 90% of the American people swallowed his crap. Right, right. Uh, Bibi Netanyahu may be the last prime minister of Israel because he's uh, in 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 order to stay out of jail, uh, boasted he can wage war on seven fronts, and he can't. He can't defeat Hamas, and he can't defeat uh, Hezbollah. And there's no way he's going to defeat Iran. Correct. People forget what happened when Iran sent all those missiles and uh, and and drones after they they murdered the guy who was the uh, one of the top commanders in in Damascus Syria in the consulate in retaliation Iran did that and Israel's retaliation was nothing so it's very I'm very concerned if we don't unite for peace we're going to die in war and again this isn't a very uh, Happen, it, it, there's no independence anymore. It, it's not, it's dependence with its government rule. And again, you mentioned what happened with the dictatorial uh, Supreme Court ruling. We have a dictator in charge. Well, we have a, a president, who, whoever the president is. Now, this af opinion is effective as of uh, Monday, so it applies to Joe Biden, who can't be prosecuted for anything. But we, the people, are prosecuted for the fullest. Correct. While the bigs get a slap on their wrist. Correct. 
Correct. That's why I said this opinion could have been written by FDR, could have been one of his speeches from the mid thirties when he was ramping up a uh, big government. Yep. Judge, thank you so much for being on. Thank you for all that you do. And everybody go to judging freedom to see what the judge and the great guests that he has on day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. Today, no De Dennis Kucinich, oh. Colonel McGregor, Phil Giraldi, wow. Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson, Max Blumenthal. Ah, oh, what a, all right, there you go. The great lineup. Well, we're trying to do in three days what I normally do in five because the rest of the of the week is a is a holiday. Okay. Uh, thanks uh, a lot, Judge. All See right, you next week. See you next Wednesday. All the best.